In the previous video, Boji headed to the castle to protect Queen Hilling, just when Jigon is swinging Mitsumata who tried to protect the queen. From side to side, hitting him on the ground, he suddenly stops and falls to the ground. Queen Hilling is surprised by this and sees Cage and then Boji appears crying for Mitsumata. Cage goes to take the queen's hand and leads her to heal Mitsumata but she tells him that she has exhausted her power and portions. Cage gives her portions to refuel her strength to continue healing Mitsumata. She heals him but she gets distracted when she sees Boji facing Jigon who has gotten up. Jigon swings his hammer at Boji but Boji easily breaks it. Jigon tries to step his giant foot on Boji and crush him under it, but Boji stabs him under the foot. Jigon retracts his foot and passes out after. Queen Hilling remembers when Boji was helping to put out a fire that had engulfed a house in the town. He had this small cup that didn't carry enough water to do any impact. But his brother, Data could lift a large barrel to carry enough water. Queen Hilling cries at how Boji has become strong to stand up to monsters and criminals. Cage ties up Jigon after, he shows Boji that Mitsumata has been healed by the queen. Boji hugs the queen but quickly let go, the queen then brings him in for a proper hug. Queen Hilling asks who Cage is and he says he's Boji's best pal through thick and thin but she doesn't buy it so, Mitsumata vouches for him and his loyalty to Boji. Hilling then apologizes. Boji sees that the animals which Dorsh was fighting are hurt and he doesn't like seeing that so, Queen Hilling heals them all. When they wake up, they don't attack. Jigon wakes up too and breaks the rope they had tied him with and bows down to Boji, recognizing him as his master and friend. Boji is told that he needs to face Damaz who's in the basement where they need to pass to return the animals back to the underworld. Despite showing a little doubt, Boji and Cage get on the move. Seeing the long long way down, Jigon jumps down the stairs to cut the distance. He lands right in front of Damaz and Dessa, Hekuro was hiding just around the corner. Boji starts to panic and Damaz starts to cry for him. Cage tries to cheer him up but when he feels his body, he can tell that Boji is overwhelmed by all his negative emotions. He starts to blame Demaz, having it being him who betrayed Boji. Demaz tries to kill himself by jumping off the high stairs where he was standing, but he fails dismally. Hakuro tells him to get himself together, he regains control. Finally, Dessa sees his criminal, Jigon, and he orders his knights to take him. Jigon fights back when they charge at him. Even when Cage tells him to stop because they aren't there to fight, he continues and gets cornered. Dessa strikes Jigon with lightning and he falls down. Boji and Cage sees and Boji decides to defend him but Damaz stands in front of him to fight in his place. Cage asks Dessa what he's doing there, he explains that he wants Moranjo, the person who stole his criminals. Boji hears the name Moranjo and remembers that she's the woman who killed his mother. He witnessed it when it happened. He cries at this painful memory but he smiles when Cage asks about it. Boji tries to shield Jigon so that Dessa doesn't hurt him but Dessa explains that Jigon is a criminal of the underworld and how he became a criminal. Jigon wakes up angry at Dessa and charges at him. Dessa tries to strike him with his lightning, but Boji jumps to his defense with his tiny sword and he dispels the lightning. Dessa then charges his bat-like weapon with lightning to end the fight really quickly but Boji flails his hands and throws his sword away to not continue the fight. He tries to communicate with Dessa but Dessa can't understand him so Cage comes to help explain the situation. He explains that Boji is not trying to fight Dessa but to stop him from taking Jigon because he's their friend. Dessa refuses to let them have Jigon and explains that he wants Jigon in the order of the underworld as per Aukin's wishes when he was still humane. Boji points his sword at Dessa and stands ready to fight him for Jigon. Jigon remembers the kindness of Boji and he tells him that Boji has his heart but he has to return home. The animals that Boji, Cage and Jigon were escorting back to the underworld show up and start to attack Dessa but he easily stops them. He orders them and the rest of his men to return home. They do and Boji waves goodbye to Jigon. Demez and Hokuro come before Boji after and bow to him. He starts to panic once more and turns his back on them. They apologize but only Cage talks to them. They ask who he is and he says that he's Boji's friend and Hokuro starts crying, relieved that Boji wasn't all alone all this time, he had a friend. Cage also confesses that when Damaz pushed Boji into the pit, he's the one who saved him. Damaz cries hearing that Boji wasn't injured in the fall. Cage asks Boji if he can forgive them since they aren't all that bad. Boji looks at Damaz one last time, remembering when he used to laugh with him while training until his face changed when he pushed him into the pit. He continues freaking out and runs up the stairs to get away from them. Cage curses at Damaz and Hokuro before following after Boji and try to cheer him up so that his hatred for Damaz doesn't eat away at his good heart. He races him to the top of the stairs. They get outside and start arguing about who won their fun little game. Boji takes a head start for another race. They race until they find Apias who has collapsed on the ground. They check his vitals and find that he's still alive and they decide to take him to Queen Hilling. 
he wakes up and he tells them the truth about Moranjo. He tells them that Moranjo's plan is to kill the queen and destroy the kingdom of Boss so she and Boss can continue their journeys together. He also tells them that she has helped Boss come back to life and that his soul is in Data's body. He stands up and tries to stop Boji from interfering as his duty is to carry out Moranjo's orders. He sees Boji's aura expanding, and he realizes that Boji has become strong after training under Despair. He lets Boji and Cage go and head to the castle. While they run, Cage tells Boji that they should start with the criminals and then take care of Boss after. Boji remembers times with his father and starts to panic a little. Cage tells him not to doubt himself and he regains his confidence back. They see Aoken who was called by Moranjo to the castle. Boji and Cage follow him there and see Aoken and Moranjo together, alongside them are Zoku and Black, two more criminals from the underworld. Boji and Cage hide and witness the four of them turn on each other. Zoku sees trouble with Aoken and pushes Black to Aoken's sword. Black is slashed and killed. Zoku runs for the castle wall and Boji follows to stop him from running. Aoken also follows them up the wall. Zoku gets scared that both his opponents are very strong. But since one can show mercy, he pretends to cry, not wanting to die and he begs for mercy so that Boji feels sorry for him. But when Boji gives in, he blows his purple poison smoke on him. Boji is not affected by it since the giant race is immune to poison. Boji finally stands up to Zoku but Zoku jumps down seeing that Aoken is behind him. Boji follows him down and before Zoku can go anywhere, Boji slashes him with his small rapier and ties him up with ropes. Aoken comes down to face Boji and their fight begins. With incredible speed, Boji dodges Aoken's attacks and counters with just scratching his armor which only tickles him. They continue to fight and this time Boji aims for Aoken sword and he breaks it into pieces. This move is great but Aoken's sword repairs itself because it's made of his blood and his blood regenerates no matter what. Moranjo tells Cage that Boji can't defeat Aoken because Aoken is immortal and the only way to not get killed by him is to run away. A mirror talks to Cage and advises Boji to run up to the top of the castle wall to avoid Aoken. He does and Aoken shifts his focus to Zoku now. Boji comes down the wall to defend Zoku. Cage asks who the mirror is and the person tells him she's Moranjo. Cage holds Moranjo at knife point threatening her for causing this whole mess while Boji continues his fight with Aoken so that Aoken doesn't hurt Zoku. Cage tries to interfere but Boji tells him to run away, but Cage refuses. When Boji is tired from all the fighting with Aoken, Aoken tries to slash him but a spear is thrown between the two, it gets hit by lightning and it stops the fight. Dispa and the captain of the Underworld Order appear. Dispa tells Boji that he fought well so far and that he should stop now. Cage continues to support that Boji did indeed fight well because he wants to make sure that no one is hurt. This makes Moranjo remember her kind mother and she starts to feel a little guilty. Aoken tries to stand ready to fight Dispa and the captain but his efforts fails and he tries to run away. Suddenly Aoken gets hit by Dessa's lightning strike. He doesn't die from the strike, he goes for Dispa and the captain. The captain fights him with a dagger but Aoken stabs him anyways. Dispa tries to fight Aoken with his brain. While he reminisces about Aoken when he was still a brother who was much more humane, Aoken tells him telepathically that he doesn't need saving yet. Dispa just stabbed in the chest with Aoken's sword. Seeing Dispa down, Boji gets angry and goes on a rampage to break Aoken's armor. But Aoken gets back up to continue the fight and his blood repairs his armor and sword. When Aoken shifts his focus to Cage, Boji attacks him from behind. Aoken stabs him in the leg and gets ready to kill him. Cage freaks out when he sees that his best pal is about to be killed. He rushes to them and goes on a rampage. He starts to grow big and big and he swallows Aoken. But Aoken breaks out of Cage with his sword which kills Cage in the process, and he approaches Boji and stabs him. Moranjo decides to move from her mirror form and transfers her soul into the corpse of Red, another criminal she stole from the underworld. She goes to heal Cage and, in the process, Dispa and Boji are transported to the realm between life and death to witness Cage crossing over to the afterlife. Cage happily crosses over to where his mother is calling him but Moranjo appears and stops him. She asks him if there are no ties he has left behind and he suddenly remembers Boji. Cage tells his mother that he can't join her yet as he has a business to take care of, and his mother cheers him on. Back in the living world, Mitsumata sees a wounded Boji and starts to panic. Aoken sees him and sees food. He approaches him and Mitsu tries to defend himself. But Aoken stabs him and drinks his blood. He tries to stab him the second time but he's stopped by Bibin. Dorsh, Damaz and Apias appear as well to help Bibin out. They try their hardest, starting with Damaz, but they can't bring Aoken down. Boji sees his mother while still witnessing Cage's crossover. Boji's mother and Moranjo's mother have both appeared to talk with Moranjo and they make her realize that she was wrong all along. Boji cries when he sees his mom but he also shows that he's happy. Dispa tells him that whatever it is that's happening, it won't end happy. When Moranjo creates a wind to sweep them back to the living, Boji finally gets to see Moranjo's terrible past and trauma, he cries for her sad story. 
Despa tells him that he will have to make a decision to kill her when the time comes but Boji shakes his head. Cage and Despa are finally awake and Despa, after seeing that the big four have been defeated by Alkan, says that the captain of the underworld order is the one who can continue fighting since he knows a certain technique. But Alkan stabs him instantly. Boji tries to stand up to Alkan after Alkan tries to approach Cage again. Alkan charges at Boji but King Boss in Data's body appears and hits Boji with his club. He continues to hit everyone from his kingdom but soon, he heals them at the same time. Boji and Cage start to celebrate but soon stop. Alkan is still alive and when he gets up, Boji tries to stand up to him but King Boss stands in front of him. Boss continues to fight Alkan who keeps getting back up after being beaten up by Boss. All this while, Boss is figuring out how to prevent Alkan from getting back up. He finally takes out a massive boulder from the ground and constraints Alkan inside and closes him inside it. And that's how Alkan was stopped. But the Boji stands up ready to fight his father as the spa had planned. Boss ignores him and goes to talk to Miranjo. She confesses that she was wrong. Boji remembers his father and brother. He tries to fight Boss and the Big Four stand with him. They vow to protect him but he steps forward as the man to defeat King Boss. Despa tells them that King Boss will kill the men if they face him and their deaths will mean nothing. Demaz decides that it doesn't matter, he'll fight with Boji. Boji stops him before it's too late by striking him with his needle sword, knocking him out. He then stands face to face with Boss and their fight begins. Boji dodges Boss's attacks and strikes with his sword as well, destroying Boss's weapon and finally giving him a blow that weakens him. Boss crawls to Moranjo and apologizes before he tries to kill her, but Boji stops him. Moranjo tells Boji to destroy her so that she can return Data back to his body. When Boji is about to charge at Moranjo, Apias gets in between and begs Boji not to kill Moranjo. Boji, once more, approaches Moranjo and tells her that he wants to save her from the demon. He breaks the mirror and Boss's soul leaves Data's body. The demon appears to devour Moranjo's soul. Data finds out that Boji's power was stolen by Boss when he made a deal with the demon. Boji asks Hokuro to shoot his arrow at the demon but the demon just easily snaps the arrow. Despa asks Desa telepathically to strike it with his lightning and he does. The captain of the underworld order servers the demon's head off. Despa catches the head and dibs it until he gets a wish. He wants to free Alkan but Boji cuts him off to tell him to save Moranjo instead. While they're discussing, Data is awake and he steals the wish to revive Moranjo. The demon grants his wish to Despa's utter shock and disappointment. Moranjo wakes up and Data asks her to marry him. She cries but she accepts. Despa accepts that his wish was stolen from him and he asks for monetary compensation. Boji is happy and he's praised by Despa. Queen Hilling finally comes to find that everything is resolved and that Data has asked Moranjo to marry him. Queen Hilling is in doubt at first, reasonably so, but Boji asks her to accept Data's request and she shows signs of acceptance. Data is asked to relinquish the crown to Boji but Boji suddenly starts to panic. He gets very anxious. When Data asks Boji to become king, he refuses because he doesn't think he's worthy. Cage gives Boji and 1000 years of death jutsu as a way to cheer him up and restores his confidence back. They all bow down to the new king, King Boji. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.